everyone and welcome! If there was something that people didn't expect, it was learning about Akali for the first time from a content creator rather than Riot themselves. You would have more luck for seeing this with a pink ward. And we know that thing is as meaningful as looking for family bonds in the Dooku Toh family. Clever. Akali revealed something new about Ionia and, well, being the god of Ionia as proven by this piece which was actually sent to me by Riot Games, Yes, this is Ionia, and yes, I am the lord now, and being the lord, it is my duty to serve my land well. So without further ado, let's have a look at Akali. The story of Akali begins right in the middle of the story of Zed and Shen. And Akali's story shed some light on what happened after Zed turned to the dark side. It's not a lot of new information, but some retconning has happened indeed. So it is important to mention it before we start with Akali. Zed and Shen were two ninjas trained in the Kinko Monastery. While Zed is an orphan, Shen is the son of their master, Kusho, the Eye of Twilight. Kusho was an elite warrior capable of restoring balance against the greatest of odds. Such legendary was his reputation that when the criminal known as the Golden Demon appeared in the southern Ionian mountains and all other demon hunters and Wuju masters failed, the government was forced to ask Kusho for help. The Golden Demon was known for leaving behind horribly mutilated and twisted bodies for display, seemingly without motives. Throughout the province of Zayun, he slaughtered scores of travelers and sometimes entire farmsteads, no matter how fearless one was. His victims' corpses spread terror for miles around. So when Kusho stood up to the task, he had to take his best students with him. So it fell upon Shen and Zed to be his guided hands of will. At this time, the two young warriors felt no real hatred towards each other. Zed was a bright student following his studies, and Shen was known for his wit and humor. But that all changed when the three of them disguised themselves as merchants and moved into the province. In secret, they visited the countless families emotionally shattered by the killings, dissecting the horrific crime scenes, and looking for possible connections or patterns to the murders. Their investigation took four long years, and left the three men changed. The famous red mane of Kusho turned white. Shen, still known for his wit and humor, became somber. And Zed, the brightest star of Kusho's temple, began to struggle with his studies. Upon finally finding a pattern to the killings, the great master is quoted as saying, Good and evil are not truths. They are born from men and each sees the shades differently. Depicted in a variety of plays and epic poems, the capture of the Golden Demon would be the seventh and the final great feast of the illustrious career of Lord Kusho. On the eve of the Blossom Festival in Jayon Pass, Kusho disguised himself as a renowned calligrapher to blend in with the other guest artists. Then he waited. Everyone had assumed that only an evil spirit could commit these horrific crimes, but Kusho had realized the killer was an ordinary man. The famed Golden Demon was actually a mere stagehand in Zion's traveling theaters and opera houses, working under the name Kada Jin. When they caught Jin, young Zed marched forward to kill the cowering man, but Kusho held him back. Despite the horrors of Jin's actions, the legendary master decided the killer should be taken alive and left at Tula prison. Shen disagreed, but accepted the emotionless logic of his father's judgment. Zed, disturbed and haunted by the murder scenes he had witnessed, was unable to understand or accept this mercy. And it is said a resentment began to bloom in his heart. Zed continued to struggle with his studies, his frustration ultimately forcing him to go into the sealed part of their clan's temple and find a source of power that would make him more powerful than any of his fellow students. That's when Master Kusho found out Zed had uncovered the secret shadow techniques hidden inside the temple. And that's when Zed was banished from the Kinko Order. Of course, years passed and Zed eventually created his own circle of followers, the Order of the Shadows. In the old story, Master Kusho waited for Zed's return and he peacefully invited him into their temple. But the new story that came with Akali states something else. So let's have a look at the story of Akali now. Ionia has always been a land of wild magic. It's vibrant people and powerful spirits seeking to live in harmony. But sometimes this peaceful equilibrium does not come easily. Sometimes it needs to be kept in check. 
The Kinko are self-appointed keepers of Ionia's sacred balance. The Order's loyal acolytes walk in the spirit and material realms, meditating conflicts between them and, when necessary, intervening by force. Born among their ranks was Akali, daughter of Mayhem Joman the Thai, the renowned Fist of Shadow. Mayhem and her partner Tano raised their daughter within the Kinko Order, under the watchful leadership of Great Master Kusho, the Eye of Twilight. Whenever her parents were called away, other members of the Order stepped in as Akali's surrogate family. Kenan, the Heart of the Tempest, spent many hours with the young girl, teaching her shuriken techniques and emphasizing speed and agility over strength. Akali was a precocious child and soaked up the knowledge like a sponge. It became clear to all that she would follow her parents' path. Along with the Great Master's son and appointed successor, Shen, she would lead a new generation dedicated to preserving Ionia's balance. But balance can be fleeting. The Order found itself divided. A wayward acolyte named Zed returned and clashed violently with Kusho, wrestling power in a bloody coup. Akali fled into the eastern mountains along with Mayhem, Shen, Kenan and a handful of other acolytes. Sadly, Tano was not among them. Zed's transformation of the Kinko into the merciless Order of Shadow was almost complete. But as the new Eye of Twilight, Shen intended to rebuild what had been lost. They would return to the Kinko's three fundamental philosophies. The pure impartiality of watching the stars, the passage of judgment in coursing the sun, and the elimination of imbalance by pruning the tree. Even though they were now few, they would train neophytes to restore and grow their numbers once more. When Akali came of age at 14, she formally entered her Kinko training, determined to succeed her mother as the new Fist of Shadow. She was a prodigious fighter and mastered the Kama and Kunai, a handheld sickle and a throwing dagger. Though she did not possess the magical abilities of many of her fellow acolytes, she proved to all she was worthy of the title, in time allowing her mother to step down and help mentor the younger neophytes. But Akali's soul was restless and her eyes were open. Though the Kinko and the Order of Shadow came to an uneasy accord in the wake of the Noxian invasion of Ionia, she saw that her homeland continued to suffer. She questioned whether they were truly fulfilling their purpose. Pruning the tree was meant to eliminate those who would threaten the sacred balance, yet Shen would always urge restraint. He was holding her back. All the mantras and meditations could keep her quiet, but such platitude would not defeat their adversaries. Her youthful precautiousness turned to outright disobedience. She argued with Shen, she defied him, and she took down Ionia's enemies her way. In front of the whole order, she declared the impotence of the Kinko. All its talk of spiritual balance and patience accomplishing little. Ionians were dying in the material realm, and that was the realm Akali would defend. She was trained as an assassin. She was going to be an assassin. She did not need the order anymore. Shen let her go without a fight, knowing this was a path that Akali must walk alone. Perhaps that path would bring her back one day, but that would be for her to decide. So the new story states that when Zed returned, he clashed with Kusho violently. There was no peaceful talk. And maybe Zed didn't necessarily decapitate Kusho in the way he did in the old story, which we didn't really have a lot of information about. So it seems like the ninja orders are getting some proper ironing on their lore right now. Riot also tried to tell people the story of Akali in her new trailer, although that version was oversimplified. But because we need to cover the stories of all sorts, here it is anyway.
But that's going to be it for this video. So if you like this video, feel free to rate it and subscribe for more lore and news. If you'd like to check the links to our social media, Twitch merch and PO box will be in the description. Of course, massive shout out to our patrons for going the extra mile, you guys are amazing. And with that, thank you all so much for being here and for your support, you know I really appreciate it. And as always, thank you come again.